possibilities Within the limits it was clear to me Called a space I could call my own Without a line to see outside the hole On most days I'd always work within the boundaries that I and welcome to UART's virtual opening act. I'm Sarah Pyle. I serve as the Assistant Vice President for Student Services, and it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the University of the Arts. First, I'd like to thank our wonderful School of Music students, led by Raf krauss Pallet. Raf created this original composition specifically to welcome you, our new students, much the same way he was welcomed during his opening act experience in 2017. As the weeks go on, you'll meet your first year guide and members of our dedicated faculty and staff. Throughout tonight's opening act, you'll get to meet many of them as they've joined us virtually with a personal welcome video. And now it is my pleasure to introduce David Yeager, president of the University of the Arts, who's been leading our campus since January 2016. Since his arrival on campus, he has initiated exciting new projects with a student focus, creating the maker's space, our Center for Immersive Media, and expanding our campus to Rittenhouse with the Art Alliance. Please help me welcome President of the University of the Arts, David Yeager, to the stage. Thank you, Sarah, and good evening to everyone. Now may I start by saying good evening, and it's quiet, and then all of a sudden I say, good evening, and everybody answers me. It won't happen today. This is an unusual time, but also an exciting time with many, many opportunities. The road you choose will determine a lot. Is this an opportunity, or do you see this as preventing you from being the artist you really want to be? 
As an artist, I see this as an incredible opportunity to break barriers, break rules, think about new spaces, new ideas. And when we all get back together again, we'll all be able to feel good about what happened this past semester. I thought about the artist Robert Rauschenberg and how he collected garbage all around and made these beautiful combines of images that had social implication and were powerful collages. I thought about Hollywood, how they're discovering new TV shows and movies by people shooting things on their iPhone and posting them on YouTube. Five years ago, 10 years ago, that would never have happened. I thought about Trisha Brown, Dance Company. I saw a piece where instead of using the stage, they performed on a wall and on ropes. So you saw the dancers from a totally different perspective. If there's one thing I'd like you to think about is that this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to get out of the traditional way we've always thought about things and you've always been taught those things and to expand your vocabulary, to read and look at other materials, to think about how you as individual artists can expand your abilities and your talents. All of us miss you coming back to campus. There's no such thing as a campus without our students. Faculty, staff, and administration every day talk about this. One small little highlight is that the artist Carrie Mae Wims is working with us on a very large project on Broad Street. It's gonna enliven Broad Street, but also send a clear message about how we must work together and the issues of COVID virus. So please work hard, think big, and we'll look forward to seeing you as soon as we can reopen campus. Thank you. Hi, University Arts. My name is Drew Applegate. And I'm Katie Graziano. We're both animation alumni from UArts that now work in the animation industry. We're also engaged. <laughs>I met at UArts, but now we're in California at different studios making storyboards for cartoons. But it all started with our student films. Here's a snippet of my senior film, which is the West. Here's a clip from my senior film, Little Buggies. She must be in the places we haven't checked yet. So, let's go! And now I work at Disney on a show called Amphibia. Here's a little snippet of a part of the show I worked on. on a show called Thundercats Roar. Here's a clip from the intro.
there are so many opportunities that can prepare you for what's next after graduation. Yeah, I joined the CA and RA programs with Student Life, which helped me learn how to work best as a team, a skill that's invaluable in animation work. And I collaborated with people from different majors in the Comics Club at UArts. Connect with those around you. Take advantage of opportunities UArts and the City of Philadelphia has to offer. Grow as a person, broaden your mind, and learn all you can. You're only going to get better and better with each year. And most importantly, create! <laughs> now enjoy the show! Hi everybody. It's been about a year since we filmed this video and obviously a lot of things have changed. We're coming at you from our home office. Uh, I just started on Amphibia Season 3 at Disney. Um, and I'm at Warner Brothers on Jellystone right now. Um, we just wanted to talk about uh, how we've been working from home in the animation industry during COVID. Thanks to our union and our studios, we were able to take home some teaks to work on. And thanks to technology, we were able to stay on schedule with our productions and work pretty much as normal. We've been using video apps to get notes, talk with our crew, and pitch our storyboards. We've been keeping up with other artists and alumni through social media like Instagram and Discord. It's been fun doing draw-togethers online. It's important to keep in touch with people, especially right now. Collaborating with others, even online, is so important in growing as an artist. Through UArts and online communities, there are plenty of ways to collab and create with others. We hope you all stay safe. And have a great year at UArts. Bye, everybody! See ya! Hi, I'm Wendy Weinberg, Dean of the School of Film. In our school, we have animation, film, film and animation, film design, game art, and screenwriting. Everything you need to create exciting, moving images. Now, you just saw animators Drew and Katie, and they both were in my video production class as freshmen. And I can tell you they were as much fun then as they are now, as well as creative and really clear about the kind of work they wanted to make. You may not know the path you want to take, but we have amazing, talented, and dedicated faculty who will help you to find your way and express your personal vision. And best of all, you'll be surrounded by other students as passionate about moving images as you are. One thing the global pandemic brought to light is a realization that especially in the darkest times, we need entertainment. And having already met a few of you online, I'm confident that you'll be the next group of artists to make a real difference. So welcome to you arts and have a wonderful semester. Hi, I'm Mark Toshe and I'm the Dean of the School of Design. Welcome and congratulations to all the incoming students and especially to our new design students. The School of Design at UArts redefines what it means to be a 21st century designer. Our programs are graphic design, illustration, interaction design, and product design. Let's take a quick look. UArts graphic designers make meaning in the world. They generate and express ideas that move people to action. UArts illustrators are the imaginers of society. Students explore career options from children's books to concept art and beyond. Interaction design at UArts provides designers with a dynamic digital toolbox, empowering them to build their own definition of what design can be. At UArts, product designers literally shape the world around us. They create objects and systems that solve problems and improve our lives. Looking forward to seeing you this fall in the School of Design. Hi everyone, my name is Rick Longo. I'm the Vice President for Academic Operations, Enrollment Management, and Student Affairs here at University of the Arts. Have any of you ever gone skydiving? Anyone? Well, I have. Some 30-some odd years ago, when I got out of college, my first job was in admissions for an art school in New York. Don't hold it against me. And I was working in the staff in admissions, and a group of students approached me and said, hey, Rick, would you be our club advisor? We need an advisor to have our club to get a budget from the school and be able to drive the van um, for our, to our outings. And I said, what club is it? They said, a skydiving club. This is a school in Brooklyn, New York. 
thinking skydiving club. Well, all right, if I just need to drive the van and get you money, that's fine, but I'm not gonna do anything else, but great, thanks. Fast forward, we go on an outing. I drive the 18 passenger van to upstate New York, and on the drive up, the students say to me, oh, by the way, Rick, we're paying for your jump. And I said, I'm not jumping. And they said, well, yeah, no, don't, you're our advisor, we're thanking you, it's great that you're doing this, so we're paying for your jump. And I said, I'm not so sure. Anyway, we, we drive a few hours out of New York, get to this remote airstrip in the middle of nowhere, and everyone gets out of the van and starts going through the training. And by training, they put you in a harness, hang you from the raptors, they spin you around, and they shout things at you, like your chute didn't open. And if your chute doesn't open if, as you're falling out of the plane, you've got 12 seconds to open your belly patch and throw it over the opposite shoulder of where you're falling in order to save yourself. 12 seconds as you're dropping to earth. And then they say, well, your chute's open, but it's tangled. You've got to climb up your straps and untangle the tangle as you're falling to earth. 20 seconds and you bounce. Real, real exciting adventure going on here. Then they start telling you, okay, you're heading to trees, what do you do? Electrical wires, what do you do? Water's coming up, what do you do? And you're like, well, what do you do? And they said, well, think thin, was their advice. So you're going through this process of training and get ready for this experience, and all you're thinking about is, you're, you're dead. This is not gonna work for you. Um, then you go out to the picnic tables outside, and you practice jumping off the picnic tables to practice your, your, your landing. So when you come down, you land on your toes and you roll to, to, to offset the impact of coming down from, from the plane. But you're jumping off picnic table, so it's real high tech. Then they tell you when you're, when you're getting to a certain point, when you meet the horizon line, they'll say to you, eyes on the horizon, and that means get in your jump stance and get ready to drop and roll when you hit the ground. They strap you up in these jumpsuits. They put the parachutes on incredibly tight. They put a helmet on you. You can barely move. And then they put six people into this little plane with no door on it, and you take off. Now you're flying up there, and there's no door because you're gonna be jumping out, but also the door might cause a problem and get tangled with chutes, and they don't want that happening. The, the instructor then takes the first person by the ankles, grabs them to the door, has them put their feet out, and at that point they said, there's no the point in no return, you're not allowed back in the plane. Because if you get back in the plane, there's a chance your chute might open and pull you through the other side of the plane. So this is a really fun experience, as you can imagine. So the first person comes, ankles out, and out they go. Now luckily, you have a jump cord that in case you don't pull your own chute at the certain part, it pulls it for you. And so the person, first person goes out, and you see them, the plane speeds away so that the propellers clear the parachute, and you see this person just disappearing to nowhere. Then the next person, then the next person. And you're figuring, well, they're dead, they're dead, they're dead. Not an exciting club. I'm the last person in the plane. And the, the, the flight instructor's like, how you doing? Looking at me. And I'm like, I'm going to kill myself so this guy thinks I'm cool. Brings me over. My feet are outside the plane. I'm thinking, what? why am I doing this? But they paid for my jump, so I'm doing it. Out I go. And next thing you know, I visually blacked out. But next thing you know, my chute's open. No tangles, no tears, no rips. But I do look around and all I can see are trees and power lines and water. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm just looking around at all these things and I'm thinking to myself, I'm alive. This is so great, I'm alive. And I'm just pleasing. It's an incredible experience. And all of a sudden I hear them yelling out, eyes on the horizon, eyes on the horizon. I'm like, what, what? And instead I come down and I land like this and fall over. But I don't care. So I'm alive. So I'm excited, I'm on the ground. I roll up my chute, get over my shoulder, and I've got to walk about a mile to where the hangar is. But I don't care, because I'm alive, and I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing in there, I'm so excited. I get to the hangar, everyone's sitting around, I'm sitting down, and all of a sudden I go, wow, my ankles really hurt. And turns out when I went and landed like that, I sprained both my ankles. Didn't feel it, the adrenaline was pumping, I didn't know it until I got into that chair, I'm thinking, well, it's okay, I'm alive, that's okay. So then, I'm listening to everyone else talking about their jumps, and they're talking about these experiences where they just saw the world differently, experienced the world differently, the sound, the noise, the smell, how they moved through the air. They flew to Earth, and I fell to Earth. And I realized I missed the whole thing. They had an experience, I just had a, 
a transaction, get me to the bottom. And so why am I telling you this? Because here you are now, you've gone through the last four years of being in a harness and people are spinning you around and pushing you back and forth and telling you what you should do and watch out for this and be careful for that and make sure you know this. You've got all this knowledge and experience coming along and now you're in the plane and your feet are hanging over the edge. And you gotta make a decision. Are you going to fly or are you going to fall? It's a big difference. Your enrollment here is not any guarantee of success. Your engagement here is the guarantee of your success. What decisions are you gonna to make to engage with each other, with your faculty, with your programs? Are you looking for the easiest schedule or the most difficult schedule? How are you gonna grow your creativity? How are you gonna challenge yourself? Those decisions will make a big difference. You are in control of what happens from here forward. It's really important that you consider that. How are you gonna fill your head? How are you gonna fill your heart? How are you gonna fill your hands? With what do you need to soar? It's very important. So that's my advice to you. Think carefully about what you do here, here, and here. Keep your eyes on that horizon and have a great year. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to You Art's Opening Act. I'm Erin Elman, the Interim Dean of the School of Art. As you may know, the School of Art dates all the way back to 1876, founded as the Philadelphia Museum School of Art. That rich tradition stands today as we merge skills building and technique in the visual arts with the conceptual underpinnings of today's interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary art making world. Our school is home to four programs, crafts and material studies, fine arts, photography, and creative writing. This year will be different than any other in the university's history. Our faculty have worked hard to transition our courses in new and dynamic ways in response to the challenges presented to us. Artists have always translated the world during times of strife, and the faculty and staff at UART stands at the forefront of adapting to ensure that we provide you, our students, with the skills and philosophical framework to advance your education and yourselves as artists in this moment. I'm thrilled to welcome you here today, and I look forward to meeting you in person very soon. I now present to you the powerful and moving work created by School of Art students as a backdrop to the work of two creative writers in our school, Shira Surrett and Laura Miralar. So please sit back and enjoy. Hi, my name is Laura and I'm a creative writing major with a concentration in poetry. And I have two poems. This one is called Regarding Sisterhood. I measure distance in frogs splattered on the beige nest the glimmer of their wet insides that was every circle of light passing through my golden sister's book reader hair. I had wings, softer than down, white wings, slicing and thick in the air, and learned to break in the dark, still cutting fast beyond some Lancaster highway, before cousins, before the electric fence and drive through milkshakes, Baptists, the Northern Bible Belt, One Story Ranch, Galley Boy, Sugar, Butter. And this one is called Sepia and Blue. Standing before a blue smeared window, plastered from the inside with old newspapers, surprise, older voters vote for health. I realize I want what is hardest to get to. I will not be paid for quips. I can still dream. I will not run for any type of office due to selfish faith and dissonance. The swayed archeologist, this fraying bridge strong enough for only our hero, which tosses his victims into the ravine. He didn't age well. I try to lower my loves into the jungle too, but gently, every chance I get. We are the same answers to different equations. I want what is hardest to have, to make the most of groceries, black and blue typography coursing through my skull like a roll of player piano sheet music, an undiscovered classification. I hold faith in everything I cannot see. My name is Ishara Surrett. I'll be reading a piece called June 1st, 2020. Tears on my face, snot on my pillow, screaming into my sheets, I can't stop sobbing. Blood rushes through every vein in my body, overflowing them and making my arms hurt as I hug myself and try to release myself of urges, like putting my fist through my mirror. Don't do it, I tell myself, though I can't come up with a reason why. I can feel glass shards in my heart and it hurts. You would think I've lost someone. 
I didn't watch the George Floyd video because I knew it would destroy me, but I still feel broken. And I'm selfish. Because people who know him are hurting, but I only think of myself. I mourn my brothers because they're so young, but they have to grow so fast. I mourn my father because any number of incidents could have been his last. I mourn my cousins and my friends. I mourn my mother. I mourn myself. Breonna Taylor's birthday is a few days away, and she can't celebrate it. You're selfish, I think. Because people are protesting on the streets and you're not because you're scared. Why? Because if you go out there, it's so much more dangerous for you because of what you look like. Everything you do, you have to think of what you look like. And don't put your fist through the mirror. Just cry and mourn. Mourn who you haven't lost. Mourn who you don't know. Again. Because we've been here before and we'll be here again. Greetings, first year students. I'm Kim Moore, your newly appointed Dean of the Ira Brin School of Theater Arts. Like you, I'm really eager to get started. Although I don't officially arrive until January, I've already been so inspired by the faculty, staff, students, and administrators I've met so far. What an exciting place to be as we explore how theater art might advance human creativity. As you know, our world is in the midst of a powerful political, cultural, and social transformation. Artists have always been at the forefront of these moments and movements in history. Well, this is our moment and our movement to define, shape, and reform the American theater. How do you do that? Well, this endeavor begins with the biggest question, the main question. Who are you? What sort of training will you me to prepare you to tell new stories in forms yet to be devised? How will the work we create challenge, inspire, and console the collective's need to be seen and heard after so many years of silence, exclusion, and misrepresentation? Creativity and innovation begins with rigor curiosity, and a deep respect for community values. Collaboration is central to everything we do here. And you've made a commitment to learn your craft, engage and connect as citizen artists, become professionals. Well, you're ready to begin, and we're ready for you. Welcome to the Arubrin School of Theater Arts.
Hi, I'm Donna Faye Birchfield, and I'm the Dean of the School of Dance. And I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome each of you into what I believe to be one of the most extraordinary and resilient schools of dance in this nation. What really sets it apart are the students and the faculty. The faculty are some of the most impeccable professionals I've ever known in my lifetime. And the students, they continue to challenge the ideas about what dancing does, how dances get made, and what about dance we love so dearly. That passion, that drive, that commitment is what holds dance together. And I'm so happy that you'll be joining us and that as one community, we can continue to do the necessary work of placing dance alongside all the other remarkable things that this world needs at this moment in time. Thank you so much for joining us at this beautiful place, University of the Arts. New Waters is a beautiful reimagining of Bill T. Jones's iconic work, D-Man in the Waters. D-Man in the Waters uh, premiered in 1989 and was created during the AIDS epidemic. It honors the life of company dancer Damien Aquavella, affectionately called Demon. Um, struggle and hope and community survival, they are embedded, they are part of the DNA of this choreography. So we never returned to school, and um, this is an epic work to dance on the proscenium stage. It's kind of like a, a rite of passage in Bill's company. So there was, there was grief at this loss for our students. Um, our weekly virtual rehearsals had to shift and reorient. What was the point of all that movement? What was it at the service of? We had to pause and let this work be our guide through a radically uncertain time. awakened a spiritual urgency. It is a beautiful example of the power of art to hold challenge and keep us moving forward, step by step, into the unknown. This work is from the heart, and we hope you enjoy. Thank you. Welcome to UArts. My name is Laura Zamaro, and I'm from Medford, New Jersey. I'm an artist, a teacher, and a mom of two, not necessarily in that order. I graduated from the University of the Arts in Philadelphia with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting and Drawing in 2008, as well as a Master of Art in Teaching Visual Arts in 2009. During my time at UArts, I took every class and every medium I could possibly fit in my schedule, from stained glass to non-silver printmaking, which were two of my favorites. In the summer, I worked as a counselor, then a teacher at the Mainline Art Center in Haverford, PA. My time there taught me classroom management and gave me experience in teaching every kind of learner. When I was working on my master's of art in teaching visual arts, I worked as a graphic designer for a defense contractor. I learned so much about graphic design from cutting out wires in Photoshop on images of top secret military communication systems that I knew nothing about. 
I also learned how to work well with others, especially when trying to get engineers to cut down on the amount of information on a billboard for the sake of readability and design. I have spent the past eight years as a professional in-house graphic designer for J&J &J Snack Foods, the company that owns Super Pretzel, Icy, Luigi's Water Ice, and many more. You can find many of my food packaging designs and logos in your grocer's freezer. My Nana always thought it was crazy that they wouldn't let me sign my name on the packages I designed. I loved the job. It was stable and I was comfortable. It allowed me flexibility and a good home and work-life balance. After having my second child, I was searching for a change from the corporate world of art back to teaching. With the world as crazy as it is, I felt the need to use my talents to help the next generation of artists. I took a leap of faith on a mid-year long-term substitute position at Bret Hart Elementary in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. It has been a crazy first year of teaching for me in a public school, which changed in a second when we switched to virtual learning. Teachers all over rose to the challenge and pivoted overnight to virtual instruction. I was selected to film two episodes of NJTV Learning Live, which was launched, launched as a television show during COVID-19 to support virtual learning for all students. I taught myself to edit video on a short deadline and somehow pulled off two TV quality episodes recorded on my iPhone and edited in iMovie. I posted drawing prompts for my students every day to keep them creating while they were learning at home. I went through hundreds of pieces of student work every night, commenting on every single one. I was also asked to be the artist in residence at my school in 2021. A friend gave me some great advice about being a working artist. And I think it goes for any medium. She said, say yes to everything. If you are offered an opportunity to further yourself, do it. Even if you think you can't or it makes you uncomfortable. I've always had anxiety and I never in a million years thought I'd see myself on TV. I'm still nervous standing in front of a class, but don't tell my students. When you think there may be an opportunity, don't be afraid to ask. You may be surprised at what doors you can open. And the worst people can say is no. If you get rejected, dust yourself off and move on. If you keep challenging yourself, it'll be their loss. Luckily for me, I got hired as a full-time teacher. I always say if I could do anything I wanted, it would be to make art all day. And I'm thrilled that I get to do that while helping the next generation express themselves creatively. My favorite part of teaching is showing a student who thinks they can't do something that they can. Art is for everyone and everyone is capable of making good art. When a student asks, Mrs. Zamaro, how are you so talented? I always answer that I'm not talented. I'm not one of those people who can draw from a photograph and make it look like the photo. I just love to make art. The number one thing I want students to feel when they leave my classroom is confidence. I want them to feel good about themselves. There is no bad art in my classroom. I believe that all of you are capable of producing good art too. Share your art and your talent with the world because the world needs it. You can make the world a better place simply by making your mark on it. Welcome to U Arts. Hey everybody, my name is Micah Jones, Dean of the School of Music. Welcome to the University of the Arts. Uh, I'm so excited to see what you all will do over the next four years, uh, working together, growing together, um, and again, welcome to my School of Music students, welcome MBETs, welcome performance students, welcome uh, composition students. Again, just I can't wait to hear you and, and, and see what you accomplish and, and, and hopefully assist you in accomplishing your goals. Um, so with that, I just you're going to meet your program directors uh, and department chairs over the next few days. But right now, I want to introduce a piece that is a tradition at the university. Uh, it's a piece we welcome you in with and we sort of send you off with uh, upon graduation. So uh, with that, um, please enjoy, with a little help from my friends, performed by the graduating class of 2020.
somebody Let's give our School of Music's commencement ensemble, led by Micah Jones, Dean of the School of Music, a round of applause. This song, A Little Help From My Friends, is a UArch tradition, sung in celebration at opening act and during graduation each year, highlighting the beginning and commencement of your college experience. A Little Help From My Friends has come to represent the connections and collaborations within our artistic community. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed opening act, One dream, one team, one horn. Unicorn. From all of us in the Office of Campus Life, welcome to the class of 2024. <laughs> Hello, my name is Justin Lujan, he, him, his. I'm head of the acting program at the Ira Brin School of Theater Arts and I'd like to welcome y'all to University of the Arts and the family that's advancing human creativity. Let's go. Hello, I'm Juliana Foster, assistant professor in the School of Art Photography Program. I just wanted to welcome all the first year students to UArts and we're looking forward to meeting and working with you soon. We. Oui.
are all here. Yes. A collective voice two. No. You two. Ow. Magical school of dance. Hi, this is Stephen Kleinman, director of the creative writing department. Welcome. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm so excited to get our work started. This is going to be a great year, a great semester. Looking forward to it. Hi, I'm Natalie Robin. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the head of the theater design and technology program in the Bridge School. Welcome to the University of the Arts. We're thrilled to have you and so excited to get to know you. Hello. I'm Quinn Baradell. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the director of the UArts Pig Iron Devised Performance MFA and Certificate Programs. Welcome. Put your seatbelts on because your great artistic journey begins. Welcome again to orientation. My name is Dr. Emily Mattingly, and I'm the director of what's called the Critical Studies Program here at UArts. I'm also the director of the First Year Writing Program. I'm extremely excited to start working with you starting this fall. And please don't hesitate contacting me if you ever have any questions. Hi, my name is Charles Cooper. I'm the director of the First Year Experience in the School of Art. Welcome to the first year, where courses will expose you to essential concepts, studio practices, themes, and skills common to a broad spectrum of art making. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you in the upcoming school year. Best wishes from all the first year faculty in the School of Art. Eric Van Horn here, Program Director of Game Art. Welcome to UArts, Class of 2024. Happy to have you here. Hello everybody. Welcome to the magical world of UArts. My name is Miriam White. I'm an academic advisor. I work predominantly with the theater students, but I see everyone. Welcome everyone. I am Miguel Lee, Program Director of Craft and Material Studies, which includes ceramics, fibrous textile, glass, jewelry metals, and wood. Good luck on your very first semester in UArts. Hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Elisa Searman, the Director of Career Services here at the University of the Arts. My staff and I are here to support you with your career development. Keep an eye open during orientation for some more information from us, and welcome to the University of the Arts. Hi everybody, I'm Gigi Justo. I'm Student Affairs Coordinator here at the University of the Arts, and I'm honored to be able to welcome you here today to Opening Act. I hope you have a great fall semester. I hope that you make lots of new friends and try new classes and new things. But most of all, I look forward to meeting you in person soon. In the meantime, have a great year. Hi, everybody. My name is Katie Donovan. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the head of musical theater, and I cannot wait to welcome you to the Bryn School. Welcome. Hello, my name is Rebecca Sack, and I'm the program director of fine arts and painting. Welcome to the University of the Arts. My name is Suzanne Scott, and I'm the Director of Health Services here at the University of the Arts. I'd like to say welcome to the university and have a wonderful year. Please don't forget to wash your hands and always wear your mask. Hi, I'm Amy Dugas Brown, she, her, head of the Directing, Playwriting, and Production Program, and you have arrived. And by arriving, you've taken an impulse and transformed it into purpose. I can't wait to create and explore with you.